In today's video, we will be going over raised garden beds, also known as planter boxes. As you can see, I am building mine on a slight slope, so I had to dig out the one side about a foot deep and take that and pile it up on the opposite side of the planter box. I used an old 4x4 to level the ground, but you could use uh, paver stones, bricks, cinder blocks, or even just large rocks to do this. This gives it, it makes a level growing surface even if you're on a slope or even a, a nasty hill. It's also called terrace farming. On this part of the hill, it was very, very dramatic. So I dug down just over a foot and then used cinder blocks and whatever kind of leftover scrap blocks I had laying in my backyard and buried them under the surface. And I used large rocks and other clayish materials to make it strong enough so that I could put two planter boxes here and still have it look nice but still be level because you don't want the water to make all the dirt wash off. For the side walls of the planter bed I used 2x8 regular pine wood. I didn't use the pressure treated because many people say that it contains like cyanide all kinds of chemicals but they stopped using that many years ago but it still has chemicals in it that could leach into your vegetables. And if you're trying to grow organically, it's better to just use pine. Um, I've buried pine wood before and it it'll typically lasts for like five or ten years. It's not being it's not structural, it's just to hold back dirt. So it it'll be fine. It's already been a year since I've done this and there's not even one little sign of, of rot to them. So don't be afraid to do that. Now I mix a, a nice blend of organic compost, topsoil, perlite, and peat moss. Some people call it hummus, but peat moss, whatever you want to call it. Getting a nice blend of that makes the soil loose and aerated so that water can get through it and just enough oxygen can get all around the soil. As you can see, we continue to do the terracing method because we are building on a hill. And if you watch my other video, you can see us building this greenhouse in the back of this picture here. In order to get straight garden lines, it's really a good idea to put a string from one end to the other end and plant your seeds. That way, all the vegetables or whatever you're growing will be in nice, straight, even rows. It helps you, it looks, it looks nicer and helps keep space even between them. But you can do any method you choose. Here, I planted two varying crops that will grow at different times and different heights. On this one with the drastic slope, we doubled the wood to hold back the earth with the grass. And it would still allow us to access from the front. For your garden bed, you can, instead of using 2x8s, you can make them small with 2x6s. You can go larger to 2x10s, 2x12s, or even double them if you want to use more dirt and have deeper roots. It helps loosen the soil up beneath the planter bed if you have them grow down. Some people say that they're their area where they live they have like gophers or groundhogs that dig up from the bottom and they actually use metal mesh nettings to keep them out I don't have that problem here so I decided to do without to allow the roots to grow down as deep as possible freely while you're building your planter beds you can get started on growing your seedlings indoors you can do this as early as February check out my other videos to see how this is done also if you want to grow in a greenhouse and extend your growing season Check out my other videos for that as well, linked below in the description. As you can see, my greenhouse with a planter bed inside of it allows us to get a very early start in the season and grow extended season all the way up to almost November where we live, which is relatively cold climate. So you can start your seedlings in cups or starter kits and those little trays, and then when they're ready, bring them out and put them in your planter bed and you're good to go. I find the advantages of using planter beds over just regular garden, uh, open garden ground, is that it the soil it stays easier contained. It's easier to till. It doesn't get as compact as as regular soil does. I don't know how it doesn't, but it just doesn't seem to get compacted as well as hard. So it's easier to till over and turn over the next year. Also, it reduces the amount of weeds because it's all new, fresh soil inside. It will get weeds that blow into it, of course, but since the soil is so loose, it's easy to pull out. But it keeps your garden a lot neater. It's easier to keep the plants in one area instead of having them overlap. Like you see here, the 
the snow peas, the tomatoes, even the, um, the, the large and sometimes invasive zucchini plants stay in their little cubicle and only the leaves come over the side of the garden bed. So here it is a couple months later in June and the garden is thriving. And I must say, going with the garden bed was definitely the way to go. So good luck with your project. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them below and I will personally answer each one for you. If you like this video, please subscribe. Although this was all filmed last growing season, I will be making many new videos for this upcoming growing season. So make sure you do so because you will not want to miss out on all the new information I have learned and gathered with this first project I've done last year. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you can stay updated on all the newest videos.